It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Atlanta Falcons and the New Orleans Saints, next on Madden Football. It is always a celebration here in the city of New Orleans, and we are just outside of the French Quarter at the Superdome. Today, we've got an NFC South matchup, as it'll be the Atlanta Falcons taking on the New Orleans Saints. Brandon Gaunt and Charles Davis, thrilled to be with you from the broadcast booth. And partner, before we get this thing started, what are you going to be watching? Who gets off to a fast start? In horse racing terms, they talk about catching a flyer out of the gate. Who sets the pace and makes the other team chase? Here's the punter, Bradley Pinion, on to get us started. And we are underway from the Superdome. On the return, here's Rashid Shaheed. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. They'll be led out by one of the most productive QBs in the last decade. It's year 10 for the Fresno Stater now. Here's Derek Carr. It's been fun to watch his development through the years, and right now what you see is a very confident quarterback who has a strong sense of self, totally understands the offense, and knows how to get the ball to his playmakers on the run. Play action, now it's Carr. He completes it to Alave. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A really good pickup of 28 yards. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 46. Throwing now is Carr. And it gets this complete to Shahid. So the completion good for seven there. And that'll bring up second down. They'll run it for the first time with Alvin Kamara. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. Here's Kamara try to run for it. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Brad, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. And a short gain down to about the 33. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. From the 33, here's a second down and nine. On play action, it's Carr. And his throw here is incomplete. Oh, man, for him to be that wide open and drop it. Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, 
and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. So Carr departs and on is Blake Groupie for the Saints field goal. They'll put it down right at the 40, so call this a 50-yard attempt. And this one is right down the middle. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. They were probably hoping to get him a little bit closer for a shorter field goal, but he was able to get it done from deep. Nice little tester for him to begin things, huh? I think he was open for a little bit more of a chip shot. Instead, they made him stretch it out a little bit, but he's got to feel great now that he put it through the pipes. So after the field goal, back out is Groupie to send this one away. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And leading them out, a fan favorite underdog, undrafted out of Old Dominion in 2015, Taylor Heineke. Let's face it, you don't see too many Old Dominion alums suiting up under center in the NFL, and in fact, Taylor Heineke, the first ODU quarterback to suit up for a regular season game, not to mention doing well in the playoffs. This guy's an absolute fighter. Fought for every chance he's had in this league. Attitude, determination, those carry over to his teammates very well. They're going to start to drive here on the ground with Patterson. Down the numbers. There he goes. And he makes it all the way down. 31. It's a big play there for Atlanta. 45 yards. Well, welcome to the party. First carry of the game. How about that? And just think, as far as he's concerned, he's just getting warmed up. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Heineke to throw it. To be caught by his big wide receiver. And he is out of bounds right around the 10 yard line. It's another first down on what will be a gain of 21 yards. Now, a first carry here for Robinson. And he'll find his way down inside the 10 to the 9 yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. I think if we put together a job description for a middle linebacker, we would start with being able to hold down things in the middle of the line of scrimmage and be able to take on blockers. But how about the guys who can go sideline to sideline and make plays? Love a guy that can do that. We saw a perfect example of it right there. On second down, another shot for Robinson. And they'll get this from the eight to the five. Pickup of three. They'll come up facing third and five. Here's Heineke. And this is going to be incomplete. Fourth down after the New Orleans defense holds serve. Yeah, it's still early in the game. No sense taking a chance on third down and forcing one into traffic. So I like the wise play he made there. Get it to the sideline out of bounds where no one's going to have a chance at it. Kuhn knocks this one through the post. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move.
Each team with a possession, each team with a field goal as the kick is away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no coach. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. I would think as a play call, you want to look for some quick hitters to your tight end. Any type of a route to replace where that linebacker was, because when you saw the speed with which he reacted and stuffed that play, maybe use that speed against him in the future. Shotgun now for Carr. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Anytime they think they've got him open beyond the markers, you know they're going to throw it his way. And that's not going to change even after that incompletion was forced. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Carr going to throw. That is caught. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trade in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. On play action. Now call. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Pressure can come from all over when you're plotting a defensive strategy. On that particular play, it just came from the outside. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. They'll pound it up the middle with Kamara. And a five-yard gain gets him to the 42. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Tough spot here, third down and 11. Carr now to throw. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter, already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward, incomplete pass. So on fourth down, on is Lou Headley to punt for New Orleans. <laughs> 42 yards on the punt, just two on the return. And it will be Falcon football. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. So eight yards on the completion there, and it'll be second in a couple. Robinson, he'll try the left side. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Seven yards there and a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. Heineke on first down. And incomplete. A drop there in the middle third of the field. 
That'll bring up second down. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. <laughs> just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. And that's the knowledge you gain from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now Heineke. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll get this only to about the 38 as they stop him a few yards shy of the line to gain. Eight yards on the screen there, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. And that's a play that's not uncommon on third and long because the offense is just hoping that somehow they can get a guy in space and follow some blockers downfield. Does a pretty nice job there getting a few yards, but he ends up getting stopped before he can get the first down. This is taken at the 18. They'll call this a 41-yard punt, seven on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. The New Orleans offense set to take over. The last series for them, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Carr going to lead the Saints up here, first and 10, at their 25-yard line. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Open man left side. Shahid has it. And they work this well up field across the 35. A good pick up there. 21 yards. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Now Carr. That'll be taken in by Shahid. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Another catch for him there. This one good for 11. First down. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass. That required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. To throw, it's Carr. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. Working from the gun, it's Carr. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack, down he goes. Disrupting that play and dropping him was Arnold Ebikati. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Yeah, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game. I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play calling. Well, I can tell you what. When he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. Here's Lou Headley on now to punt the football. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Falcons will be taking over first and ten. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. <laughs> I 
Heineke going to lead the Falcons up now first and 10 just shy of the 30. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And his throw is going to be incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. Second and 10. Robinson up the middle. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Here's third and six. Throwing. Heineke. And that is incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. This is brought in at the 21. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Car now on first down. And he will find his man on the outside. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. That'll go for a gain of seven. And that's going to bring up second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch. Especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. On second down, Camara. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And that's a nice pickup of a first down on that second down run. And at that yardage gained, they can run that play on any down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. To throw his car. He gets it complete to A.T. Perry. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Second and a couple. Kamara up the middle. And this will wind up a Saints first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. So after the run by Kamara, now another first and ten. Now a play fake. Carr. He's got it with the 15. And he's brought down after a very nice game. So they take a decent shot, CD, and the flag comes out for pass interference. Yeah, a little DPI, as they like to call it in the business, right? And the farther you get downfield, the more frenetic things get and the more calm and controlled you have to remain as a defender. That was a little bit of a slip. Touchdown, Saints! Juwan Johnson, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Saints have taken the lead. As a general rule, quarterbacks don't want to lock in on a receiver before the ball is snapped. But in this case, based on the matchup he thought he was going to get, it was favorable for his tight end. He locked in on him early and found him for a touchdown. Blake Groupie now for the extra point. And it is up. And it's good. That'll make our score 10 to 3 now.
After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. And he returns this to the 22. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Heineke going to lead the Falcons up now first and 10 at their own 22. He'll get it to Robinson to begin the drive. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards picking up the first. A perfect example right there, Charles, of why they love this rookie runner. And think about how the NFL and the college games are meshing together more and more. You don't have to go to the NFL and learn a new set of skills. What you did in college often makes you ready for the NFL. First and 10, it's Patterson. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Look, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. Now a second down throw for Heineke. That's out wide here for Robinson. They have three yards on first down, just one yard there. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Now third down and seven. To throw is Heineke. Flush to his under pressure and he'll go down. They'll sack him on what ought to be the final play of this first quarter. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. 10-3 our score after one here on EA Sports. Second quarter now, Falcon football. As they've got it with a fourth down coming up. Now here's Bradley Pinion now. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at the 31 yard line. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. An excellent run there coming from out wide. And we used to consider these jet sweeps to be gadget plays or something a little bit unusual, right? But now most teams have some version of this play in their playbook. And I think it's a lot because of the receivers that are being developed nowadays. These guys look like running backs, even though they're playing out on the perimeter. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Well, give them credit for trying, but there's no fooling the defense with that call. They were reading run, and they set up to stuff the run and then execute it. From the 43, here's a second and nine. Here's Carr. Over the middle, complete. It's Perry. Call it a gain of six on the play. And now it's third and three. Let's do our thing. Let's do it. Throwing now is Carr. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they get five there on third and two. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn 
find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Normally, he's pretty reliable. He usually catches what's thrown to him. On that play, he simply dropped it. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Now they'll toss it out right to Kamara. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Throwing his car on third down. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Arnold Ebikady, that is now two sacks for him here in this first half. So that now four first half sacks. This pass rush has been unrelenting. And partner, you hear that sound of paper being ripped to shreds? That's a game plan that they've had so far because they've got to say to themselves right now, we have to do something differently. Well, here's Lou Headley now. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Here's a quick throw to start the drive complete. And now we'll get a stoppage here. There appears to be an injured Falcon on the field. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Here's a second and five. Now Heineke. Into the hands of London. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Play action now. Here's Heineke. That's caught left side of the tight end pits. Nice play call. A little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. In need of only about the length of the football here on second down. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Robinson will try to pick it up. And getting this chest shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. 40 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. That's how you get right up off of the map because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. First down, Heineke. And caught by London. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. 
That's a 12-yard gain now on back-to-back -back plays. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. On the give, here's Robinson. Down to about the 37. Here's a second down and seven from the 37. Heineke now. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Cordero Patterson. 37 yards. And the Falcons are an extra point away from evening this one up. They went five wide in that offensive set. And racing, going three wide's a big deal. To go five, how about the way that they finish things off? <laughs> Did you just fit a race car reference into the game? Zoom, zoom. How about the way that you play? When you go five wide, that means you're going fast now. Zoom, zoom indeed. Koo able to connect on the extra point, and we are even at 10 apiece. Level now at 10 apiece as the kicks away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23 yard line. The Saints coming out now to take the field. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 23. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He gets this one to Johnson. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Here's Carr to throw. And yeah, that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that he can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Well, they obviously red man covers their partner, and he got downfield, broke down the defender, made him what think. What do you mean by that? Bro, bro. Yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route, probably thought he was going to take it upfield, and then he curls back inside for the completion. Shoves him aside, and down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Not a lot of running room there, not a place to make a cut and kind of exit out because they had everything bottled up. Looked to me like the linemen were taking on their blocks really well and giving up no creases. From just shy of midfield, here's a second and seven. Carr going to throw. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Well, in tapping those toes, he tried to get both inbounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both <laughs> feet, not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. 
I'll take your word for it, my man. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 35. A sizable 16-yard chunk there. The drive continues. And there was absolutely zero pressure on the quarterback on that play. Third down, and he has all the time in the world to eventually find an open receiver for a first down pickup. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Back to the ground, it's Kamara. And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. 42 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they blocked well too. Not only have they scouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. Jet sweep, here's Alave. And this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. It was Bud Dupree fighting through and making the tackle. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Car to throw on second down. And he's got him. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Saints have taken the lead. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver, and that one good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Groupie for the extra point. He's got it as they go up by a total of 17 to 10. That time, a nine-play drive, and it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Atlanta prepped and readied for its next possession. They find themselves down 17-10 as they come up on a first and 10. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by Pete Werner, and he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. Boy, he had to fit that into a pretty tight window over the middle, and Charles, I think they were in zone defensively, weren't they? They certainly were. Nice read on your part, and sometimes the quarterback isn't fooled between zone and man. Sometimes just fooled by the type of zone that he sees, because oftentimes, those linebackers will vacate and run downfield with receivers. In this case, he played a pure zone and was in the wrong spot for the QB. Now after the INT, it's Carr. And the catch made by Johnson. The completion, but they go in the wrong direction. A loss of yards, and now they're dealing with a second and long. In today's NFL, we're accustomed to the tight end getting downfield and creating plays and wreaking a little havoc in the secondary. Not on this one, though. They diagnosed that one really well. Tried the dump off, lost yardage. On play action, now Carr. That's out to Hill, right side complete. 
And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that's going to set up a tough third and nine. Well, that was an okay hookup there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. So they've been unable to capitalize on the great field position as of yet. Here's third and nine. Now Carr. And that is incomplete. The third down battle won by Atlanta's defense. Solid coverage. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. So Carr departs and on is Blake Groupie for the Saints field goal. He hit his first. Now this from 43. And this one is right through. And they double him up here. That makes our score 20 to 10. So the interception set him up a terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say we should have done better there. So after the field goal, back out is Groupie to send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. Now Patterson to start the drive. That pass the 25 to the 26, a gain of five. That's a really nice, tough run inside, and they gained five yards on it, and be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Second down and a run by Robinson. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Back to Robinson now on first down. And this will be a Falcons first down as he'll get this up to about the 42. Consecutive plays now where that offensive line has really created a lot of space. And we've seen the confidence rise, haven't we? It borders on arrogance now, and that's that good arrogance, believing you can run the football whenever you get good and ready. On first and ten, it's Robinson. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. From the 46-yard line, a second down and six. And they'll try to throw now. Heineke. They'll get this to his tight end. It's Johnny Smith. And he'll be taken down with a first down as they get about 14 out of that one. And we go to the two-minute warning. A first down throw for Heineke. This pass is caught by London. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Here's Heineke. 
So they get a traffic there, and that's complete. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. So not quite a first and goal just yet as they come up now second and inches. And they'll throw again, Heineke. This will be caught at about the five. And the Falcons are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. Now that's now four completions in a row. A good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one. That ball is caught. It's London for the Atlanta touchdown. A three-yard touchdown pass. And the Falcons get a late score here in the final minute of the first half. I think everyone in the league talks about finishing, don't they? Doesn't matter whether it's a quarter, a half, a game, a series, whatever. But they're finishing the first half in fine style, putting that one in the end zone. They did, and they didn't leave much time on the clock either. Well done. Coup for the extra point. It's up and good, and the lead's now down to three at 20 to 17. So that drive, 80 yards, nine plays. And it was finished off by a touchdown catch from Drake London. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. And the Saints going to go on offense one final time in this first half. And they may just be content to take this three-point lead and head into the locker room. A little under 30 seconds to go. We'll see how they play it here on first and 10. To throw his car. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Not wanting to take a chance this time. They'll keep it on the ground. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts. And not much happening there as he'll get it back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Once again, they'll keep it on the ground. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. A Saints first down there on a gain of 11. So we've hit halftime. Just a field goal separating these two teams at the break. As we send John over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw a strong first half from the veteran quarterback, Derek Carr. His two touchdown passes helped pave the way for his guys to take this lead into the intermission. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point.
Both these offenses have been in fine form. What will the second half bring us as we are underway in quarter three? And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. The Falcons offense ready to get going to begin this third quarter. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. They geared up and took the deep shot downfield, but it turned out it wasn't one-on-one -on -one coverage. Extra defenders in the area, and that one winds up incomplete. A second down throw for Heineke. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Third and five. To throw is Heineke. That is caught. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Has a pretty good throw on the curl route there. Third down, and they pick up a first. Defense should be aware for that, right? It should be aware, but it's so hard sometimes. Yeah, it's not cause, easy. Because <laughs> when, they, when they sell that route really well, you think they're going upfield, then they curl back, show their numbers to the quarterback, and complete the play. Hand off now to Robinson. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four. Second down. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. From the 48-yard line, here's the second down and six. Throwing. Heineke. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. He's been patient this entire game, waiting for the perfect moment to surprise him with a quarterback keeper. There he catches him off guard and converts his first rush of the game into a first down. Gotta love that efficiency. They'll run it now with Robinson. And he edges forward, but only gets a pair of yards out of it. It's second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Second down and eight. Again, it's Robinson. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially, no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. A 4-3 defense there did its job, funneled things right to the middle linebacker. If they do a nice job of playing team defense, everyone takes care of their responsibilities. That allows that guy in the middle to do his job, which is search and destroy. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target in the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him. Though. Find him. Find him. Kuhn knocks this one through the post. And that's going to tie things at 20. So they come away from this opening drive in the third quarter with only three, but it does draw them even. Yeah, and that has to be job one, doesn't it? A touchdown definitely would have been nice. We know that. But here, you get back on even terms, and now you've got most of the second half to try and get yourself into a position to win. So all square here in this third quarter as the kick's away.
And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. And their three-point halftime lead gone now back to a tie game. But, Charles, I don't imagine that changes too much for this offense. I would agree. I don't think it changes much at all, whether it's a three-point lead or a tie game. They know they have their work cut out for them, and they were going to run their offense in the same vein. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and ten, just shy of the 30. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Open man downfield is Johnson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one goes for 24 yards. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. On first down, Carr. And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Back to throw here. And that one's going to come up a little short. It's incomplete. So now third and ten. They had the big play to start the drive, but two incompletion since. Car to throw again. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. Here comes the Saints punter now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. 77 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking. But the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. From the 38 now, here's second and three. Now Heineke. Flushed out. And he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down. It's a loss of a yard, so they wind up crediting him with a sack. And it brings up third down. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You talk about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starting in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. He's up to 70 yards receiving now as that last catch gets him a first down. Heineke to throw it. Throw out wide is incomplete. The target there, Mac Hollins. And it's second down. Now Heineke. London. 
And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 17-yard line. He got 29 yards that time. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. They run. Robinson. And they'll get him down right around the 16. Zach Bond there on the tackle. Well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. They'll give it to Patterson. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. <laughs> I think sometimes when you're trying to get after the quarterback, maybe it's better to be lucky than great because I think on that one, he's just trying to get upfield and rush the passer. Instead, the tackle for the loss landed right in his lap. On third down, Heineke. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and it'll be fourth down. I think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker, despite what was a really nice catch and toe tap on the sideline. Well, that's third down 101. You got to go. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. B. John Robinson, a 10-yard touchdown run. And the Falcons' decision to go for it pays off with six points. You get down this deep, Charles, you hate to settle for a field goal. They roll the dice on fourth down, really just hoping to get that first. But as it turns out, they take it all the way into the end zone. You mentioned that they took a little bit of a gamble there. Think about it this way. Most teams throw the ball in this situation in the NFL, so they really gambled with a running play, and boy, did it pay off. Pay dirt. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And they will take a seven-point lead. Now Pinion with a kickoff honors following the touchdown. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Saints again ready to go on offense. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 23. He'll start with a give to Kamara, and he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here, and what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. This is second and eight. Again, it's Kamara fighting through. And he's going to get about seven yards on that one up to around the 33. That was a good run, probably right on the edge of breaking into something really big. So the defensive guys right now are talking about, okay, what can we do to slow him down before he truly gets started? These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Play action. Now it's Carr. Throw left side is complete on the diving effort. Defense was thinking run and their delta pass of just under 20 yards. And that's how you throw for a whole heap of yards in a game. You get efforts like that from your receivers. How about him laying out for that catch? Yeah, excellent. Makes a quarterback look a whole lot better. 
from Falcon territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Now Carr. The pass caught by Alave. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And from the 42 now, here's second and two. A man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Kamara again. And he's going to get this down near the 30-yard line. 73 yards rushing now for Kamara, and it's a first down. For a lot of guys playing this game, there's no better feeling than running right through a tackle. He's able to lower his center of gravity and churn his legs for a really nice pickup. So first and 10 now from the 30. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Offense is all over. Continue to be aggressive, and most people never turn down a shot at a deep ball. But oftentimes, it attracts a little bit of extra attention, and it did on that play, and that one got knocked away. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and 10. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And his throw is incomplete. Nice back-to-back -back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for more. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. On play action. Now Carr. And that almost intercepted. Oh, they would have loved to have their first pick of the game right there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. Well, he's smart enough to avoid the taunting rule, but I'll guarantee he quietly has told them, you might want to stop coming after me downfield because I just broke up another pass and took away a big shot that you were trying to succeed with. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe, and that'll bring him back within four. He's got nine points on field goals now. He's made three of them. That gets him a bit closer, but there's no question they need to start turning some of these threes into sixes. And for him, it's not his concern, right? He just goes out there when they call on him and goes ahead and puts points up on the board. But the offense has got to get together and figure out what's stalling their drives so they have to keep calling on him. So after the field goal, back out is Groupie to send this one away. Cordero Patterson to return it, bringing it out of the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. But B. John Robinson and the Falcons back onto the field. He's had a good performance, moved the ball effectively on the ground. Of course, he has the one touchdown. And when you're able to move it as effectively as you've described, that leads to finding a way into the end zone, and now he's just trying to do it for a second time. And, of course, with that comes additional yardage. Yeah, looking for additional yardage, and again, that second score here in the third quarter. They'll start on the ground here on first down. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's second down and one. And the play fake, and now Heineke. He'll get this into the hands of Van Jefferson. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. Inside four minutes to go, third quarter. Heineke now looking to throw on first down. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Pete Werner, and he will return this one to the 30-yard line. All right, Brandon. Normally when you hear about guys making two interceptions in the game, you're thinking must be a free safety, maybe a corner. 
How about getting two picks out of one of your linebackers? Again, he's just in the right place at the right time. And that's another great play to come away with the football. The New Orleans offense set to take over. And they'll take over here following the interception with good field position and a chance to take the lead with a touchdown. So first and 10 now from the 30. They'll pound it up the middle with Kamara. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. Sometimes I forget how much information he has to go through before the ball's even snapped. But what a diagnosis right there. Saw the play, shot through the gap like a rocket, ends up spilling it for a loss. Kamara gets it again on second down. And room there to work it inside the 25. Nine good yards there on the run, and now third down. But you got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Well, they were handed great starting field position on this drive, but now they face a third and four. And a find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Saints first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. That's not the first time they've worked his way when they've needed a big play. He's been the go-to guy all game long. And they get the hookup again on third down to keep this drive alive. Carr now on first down. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. That certainly appeared to be a play call where they were just trying to make second down, second and short. I think they thought the coverage was off a little bit more than it was. Nice job there pressing up on it and forcing the incompletion. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. And they'll send the slot in motion left. On second down, Kamara. Oh, look at the juke. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Here comes third down at seven. Shotgun now for Carr. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. Give the sack to David Onyemata, the product of Nigeria by way of Canada. This defense, they just continue to feast. Five sacks now as a unit. It's been quite an afternoon getting to the quarterback. And we're seeing it come from a variety of places as well. Sometimes just the guys up front getting to them. Other times you add extra guys rushing the quarterback, twists and stunts. It's been a variety, and they've had no way of blocking them. And his kick is good. And that'll bring him back within a point. Well, the three points certainly helps, but you feel like, Charles, at this stage of the game, when you force those turnovers, you need to start converting them into touchdowns. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised myself because I thought in this situation, they were thinking end zone or bust. Now they got to rely on their defense to get the ball back again for another opportunity to get six points. So after the field goal, back out is Groupie to send this one away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. We'll get another look at Drake London as this offense returns to the field. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Heineke going to lead the Falcons up now first and 10 at the 31-yard line. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And it's going to be caught by Pitts. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 
An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. A give left side to Robinson. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. From the 44-yard line, here's second and three. Looking to throw, Heineke. Traffic and that's complete. Seven catches for him now in this last one. A first down. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here live in New Orleans. So from the 36 now, first and 10. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter play. Heineke's throw pulled in by Jefferson. So the completion gets him just a yard, and that'll make it second down. Robinson, he'll try the left side. Fights throw, and now a crease. And he'll work his way inside the 30 now to the 28. Call it an eight-yard gain. Much better shape now on third and just a yard. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. The offense on third down, they've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. They're up against a third and one situation. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. It's a pickup of six. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. They'll run again here with Robinson. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Tackle is made by Cameron Jordan. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And this will be a gain of six when it's all said and done. Down to the 15 from the 21. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Straight ahead, it's Robinson. He's not going to get there. That won't even be close. It was blown up in the backfield. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to get the lead up to four. And he'll try and throw here on the fake. The fake field goal catches everyone by surprise. And the Falcons get an important score there to extend their lead here this fourth quarter. And you don't see the fake field goal often. Here it works for a touchdown. And sometimes you see a call in the biggest stages. How about a couple of years ago, Packers Seahawks, and the Seahawks trying to rally? Fake field goal helped them win it and go to the Super Bowl. Now Young Way Koo for the extra point. And with that, the lead is up to eight. A 10 play drive that time. And the end result, an Atlanta touchdown.
And following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. Set to take over once again. Out comes the Saints offense. There's still plenty of time here in the fourth quarter. Just a one possession game down eight. They'll be looking for the touchdown and two point conversion. A field goal here on this drive does very little at this stage. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 21. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He'll get this one underneath to Kamara. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. And they may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. And that's a much-needed first down right there. Look, they're down by eight. So logic says they don't have to get a touchdown out of this drive. But the way things are going, I don't know if I'd put it in the hands of my defense here. You might not get the ball back at all. So if a fourth down situation comes up, I'm thinking hard about going for it right here and right now. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Meanwhile, Carr's throw complete there to Perry. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Ten yards, good for his Saints first down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Alave motioning to the left. And they'll fake the jet sweep there instead. Hand to Camaro. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. Second down, and it's Kamara again. And pretty good running as he'll be close to a first down at the Falcons 42. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. Fights through it. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Ten yards, good for the Saints, first down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity, usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there, I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Oh, and this one may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. Now they'll throw with Carr. That's to his running back. It's Alvin Kamara. Touchdown, New Orleans! Alvin Kamara, 35 yards. And the Saints have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth. So part one of what they needed is done. They get in the end zone. Now you have to imagine we'll see a try for two. And that's what the book says, but defensively, they can't hang their head right here. They still got a chance to come out with the lead if they make a play. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. They'll try and run it in. And he will get into the end zone for two. And this game now tied here in the fourth. 
Still time to work with on the clock, but they wanted the tie now, and they got it. And I love their aggressiveness. Go ahead and get it done. Get the game tied. Now your team has the momentum, and you're staring across the field saying, let's see if you can match us. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. B. John Robinson leading the offense out for another drive. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back, because that means everything's coming together for you. Big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. Pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes this forward for about six. From the lineman to the guy running with it, that was a well-executed first down by the offense. With two shots left to get the first, you can get a little aggressive here on second down if you want and try for some bigger yardage. This second and four. Heineke. Over the middle, caught by London. These two have hooked up nine times now this afternoon as they pick up the first. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. First and ten, it's Patterson. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Second down and a run by Robinson. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Back to Robinson now on first down. And he's fortunate to get anything from that. Give him a yard up to the 49. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so that he can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. Now second and nine. On the counter, this is Robinson. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. A gain of two there on the heels of a one-yard pickup on first. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. Here's Heineke. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 35. A third down conversion with a strong gain of 14. They go play action. Now Heineke. His throw incomplete. He didn't just deny a big throw there. He broke that one up in the red zone. An excellent play. One that may help save points on the board when this drive is over. Second and ten. Play action. 
action now. Here's Heineke. Out route to Jefferson, and he's got it. And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. 11 more yards there, and this methodical drive continues. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route, and what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing, and they got it done. And he's able to work free for about six down to the 18. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. Here now, second and four. Heineke to throw it. A quick throw there is incomplete. Really good coverage all over the field. It took away his intended read and almost dared him to try for his guy out of the backfield. No surprise on that one. It doesn't connect. This a big play for both sides. What will we see here? Third and four. To throw is Heineke. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. Now a first and ten at the 11. Back to the ground with Robinson. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Really good stop there by the end in this 4-3 defense. Yeah, not just pass rushers anymore, are they? Those guys can use their hands, control the point of attack, shed those blockers, and go get those ball carriers. Now Heineke. And that throw behind his man. He missed him. Incomplete. Van Jefferson was the intended receiver. And it's third down. They'll stop him well short of the yellow line. It's a gain of five, but it'll lead to a fourth down. Have to kick this field goal, don't you? No question about it. Look at the clock. Look at the situation. Kick the field goal. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to break our fourth quarter time. Kuhn knocks this one through the post. And they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long ways from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? The punter pinion now to kick this one away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. Out is the Saints offense now as they get ready to take over here. And now they find themselves trailing following the field goal. Still a good amount of time in this fourth quarter, but this drive very well could determine the outcome of this ball game. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 24. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He gets this one complete to Bowden. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. 15 yards is the pick up there and the drive starting very nicely. First down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. 
Now it's Kamara in the passing game. That's a good job there by the corner. And we do talk about this a lot, that a lot of corners see their job as simply covering receivers. Tackling isn't everyone's thing. But in this case, he came up quickly and made a nice, sure tackle. Here's a second and seven. From the gun, it's Carr. That'll be taken in by Shaheed. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 38-yard line. Now a first down carry. It's Kamara. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Here's second down. Gets this complete to Shaheed. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons 19. And they picked up a little bit of yardage there. And now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Car to throw. Going to throw right side here, complete. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. Second and six coming up. Here's Carr. His throw caught at about the five. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So that's going to double their pleasure for sure. They get the first and save a timeout. Throwing his car. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow, wow. What a game this has been, and what a drive that was, Charles, to take the lead here late in the fourth quarter. And, partner, that's a job well done by everyone, from the players to the guys calling the plays. And if I may introduce just one downside to the mix, might be a little bit too much time left. Enough on the clock for a final last-ditch effort to try and steal this win away. Groupie able to add the PAT, and that will make this a four-point game. After the touchdown, here's Groupie to kick this one away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So Heineke and the Falcons down by four, 34 seconds to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Back 
to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. Here comes second down. They'll look to throw. That's caught by Pitts. Room past the 35. And he will get out of bounds. So nice work after the catch. That gets a really good yardage. And they stop the clock as well. That's what they need right now. Get the first down. Get out of bounds. Stop the clock. Just playing smart football. Understanding the situation. Making the plays necessary. And making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. He's back to throw. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Demario Davis. When you talk about making winning plays, that is a winning play at this stage of the game to come up with that interception, huge. I like how you identified that because most people think winning plays are the offense trying to get it done. In this case, nursing a lead, they found a way to make a play on that side of the ball and maybe finish things off. Down to a knee here. The defense still with a couple of timeouts. We'll see if they want to use them. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. The Saints in victory formation now as they'll take the knee. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. after that one because when you have that much scoring and it still comes down to one possession game at the end that's not something we see very often in this case these offenses they brought it the defenses they're gonna need some work going forward so that'll do it for us for my partner charles davis and all the hard-working men and women on our crew i'm brandon gone you've been watching the nfl right here on ea sports the Saints are winners here as we say so long from New Orleans.